Fire after fire after fire, flames, smoke, and overheated firefighters. We held off the triple digits for most of May, and now we're barreling straight ahead into the desert heat, with Valley firefighters out in full force. And speaking of fires, we're starting with breaking news. Ironically, a fire underway at 27th Avenue and Greenway. You're looking at live pictures from Sky 12. This is an apartment fire. We'll keep our eyes on thing as uh, Phoenix Fire does their job. Meanwhile, live in Mesa at Mesa Fire Training Academy. And after all the fires that we had yesterday, we started wondering, how do these brave men and women not only deal with going into fires, but now that the heat is on, with all of this gear, which we're about to put on, how do they handle things? We're with Captain Ken Hall of Mesa Fire. Ken, thanks for having us out. Yeah, thank you for coming out today, Mark. A and Caribe is standing by with a look at your triple D uh, heat forecast. Uh, but before we do that, we want to kind of go through all of the gear that you guys, you know, put on. So uh, John is going to help me put it on, and, and maybe you can explain as he goes through this routine uh, exactly what he's putting on. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Year, but during the summer, it's potentially difficult because of the um, difficulty in cooling down after you come out of the fire. What uh, Mark is actually putting on right now is called a Nomex hood. That protects his head, his neck, and also protects his uh, back of his ear area from the, the thermal impact. And uh, I can tell you it smells like smoke, so I know it's a legit one. <laughs> Absolutely. The next thing he's putting on is a turnout coat. These turnout coats and the turnout pants he's putting on actually have three layers. They protect him from thermal impact. They're puncture resistant, and they also keep out um, the humidity or steam from fires. But one of the unique factors on these things is they also trap some of the humidity inside the turnout coat, limiting Mark's ability to evaporate and cool down in the perspiration process. So it's hard for him to cool down once he puts this gear on until he removes it. And, and Ken, it's amazing to me. John was telling me as he was sizing me up for this how expensive this stuff is. It's not cheap at all. Absolutely, this stuff is very expensive, but as, as you see, it's uh, protecting lives and it's extremely important to have the right gear. So we have the ability to go in there and rescue somebody out of the fire if necessary. The next thing he's gonna put on here is called a self-contained breathing apparatus. Basically, this fits on like a backpack and it's an air bottle with about 4,500 PSI of air inside. And it's just normal room air, it is not all oxygen. But that okay. pack obviously gives us the ability to go inside these fires that are full of heavy, thick black smoke here. and breathe clean okay. air. As okay. you can see, oh, this uh, yeah. turnout ensemble he has right now weighs approximately 60 pounds. So not only does it limit his ability to evaporate the sweat, but it also impacts um, him with a, a, a heat and a weight load. Okay. Obviously, I would be flunking out right now of the academy because I am totally <laughs> lost, but I can see that it, you have to be in good shape to be able to handle all of this gear. That's absolutely true. And we have to be heat acclimated, so we have to do a lot of exercise rounds and, and to get ourselves in good shape in the temperature before we uh, approach these fires so we're able to handle that thermal thermal impact and, out there. And it seemed like the heat just kicked in, Ken, all of a sudden. So were your guys in shape? Are they ready for this heat? Absolutely. That's one of the things a lot of our crews drill on on a routine basis is going out and they do a thing called work hardening. They put all their gear on, they breathe that uh, breathing apparatus, and they do firefighting activities out in the heat to get themselves ready. Okay, well, let's see just how hot it is outside. We're going to check in with Caribe, who's nice and cool in our studios. And Caribe, it feels really hot wearing this. I can't imagine how hot it is. What is it about? 102, 103? Yeah, well, yeah, we're right about there, but you know, I had no idea how involved all of that gear is, and to imagine that they do it in heat like today, 104 degrees out at Phoenix. Welcome back to the Mesa Fire Training Academy. I am sort of decked out here. I've got some fire hose. I've got an axe here, and we're going to climb up this tower, which is part of the training in this heat with all of this gear on just to see how my heart rate changes. What is it right now? Right now we have it at 110. Okay, so it's at 110. Lead the way, and we'll go up there, and then we'll show you how these firefighters cool off because they rotate in and out of 15-minute shifts, right? All right, it's about 15 to 20 minutes that they rotate. In this kind of heat, and I am just dripping wet right now, how much does this weigh approximately? We're about 60 to 65 pounds worth of gear. Okay, 60 to 65 pounds worth of gear. Plus we're carrying that hose pack and the axe, you can add an additional 15 to 20. Okay, so another additional 15 to 20, so close to 80 pounds. I'm gonna head back down so we can show how you guys cool off. 
Chad Brick's doing a great job. I don't know if I'm going to make to that cooling station. We're going to try, though. But I, this really is heavy. Of course, I'm not in firefighter shape. How are we doing on time, Casey? Okay, I'm going to run to the cooling station. Run with me, Chad. Okay, thanks. After a 15 minute session, they come over here to the cooling station. And can we stick our arms in the water? I won't have time to do it, but they're sticking their arms in this water. Yep, what we're going to do is we're going to peel off all your gear as quick as possible. We want to start that. Okay, we'll toss the break. We'll be back here at Mesa Fire Training Academy after this. Now let's go out to. We are here at the Mesa Fire Academy, and my voice is muffled because I have a respirator on. But in order to fight car fires, which is what we're going to show you how these guys attack us, imagine the temperatures on a day like today, 103, 104 degrees, plus the temperatures from those flames, and all of this here, we're going to show you how these brave men and women attack fires around the valley in just a second. Thanks a lot. We're out here at the Mesa Fire Training Academy on a hot day, and we started thinking after all the fires that we saw yesterday, how tough it must be for firefighters around the valley to not only deal with the temperature from flames like that, but also from the sun, and then you add in 65 to 70 pounds of gear, and it's a very, very tough situation. We're going to turn it over to the captain here while we try to tackle this vehicle fire. Okay. And you can watch as he narrates exactly how they tackle these sorts of fires. Like we talked. in the street, so we got to watch out for these vehicles. As you can see, as Mark's moving forward, one of the first things he is doing is he's trying to sweep the ground and put out any fuels that are on fire underneath. Next, he moves to that passenger compartment, and he makes sure that there's no one inside and gets that fire out inside that passenger compartment as quick as possible. After he does that, he moves over to the hood area and tries to extinguish the engine fire. But as you can see, these fires do produce a lot of hazards with vehicles we have a lot of things that can cause a hazard to our firefighters. We have struts, shocks, and things of that nature that can heat up and explode. We have uh, other struts that are behind bumpers that can blow bumpers off. We have tires that can explode. And again, we also talked about the traffic. So oftentimes our firefighters go on multiple medical calls throughout the day and they're lifting patients. They were able to put the car fire out. But I can tell you after being out here, I put on all the gear just a few minutes before we went on at six o'clock and I am soaking wet. It is really hot inside this suit. You're breathing tank air, you feel confined. And it is really, you have no idea how hard these men and women work, especially in hot temperatures like this. Having said that, let's go inside and check in with Caribe. All right. Thanks, Mark. And it's hard to imagine, of course, doing all of that in the kind of heat that we're experiencing today. Well, we've established how these men and women out here at Mesa Fire deal with the extreme temperatures and all of this gear with the flames and the temperature of the sun. Next, we're going to see how they stay safe when they go into an extremely smoky environment. This room I'm about to go into, you won't be able to see me, but thanks to thermal imaging, they'll be able to keep an eye on what I'm doing. We'll show it to you when we come back. Wow, I'll definitely have to stick around for that. Hey, it can't... Okay, we're inside. We're going inside this smoke-filled room here. We're going to try to give you an idea of how these firefighters keep track of each other or can look for victims in a room where you really can't see anything. Right here, we got the couch right here. So, hopefully you'll be able to see me as I go deeper into this room through the thermal imaging. Now maybe you can shoot an image of me as we get into where the smoke is a little bit thicker. Okay, I got your shoulder here. Now can you turn it on me so 
photographer Chad Bricks maybe can get a shot of what the thermal imaging looks like outside of here. And I can tell you, I can just barely make out my hands in front of my face. And hopefully as you look at that thermal imaging screen, you're getting a better idea of this great technology, this life-saving technology that these firefighters have to look for both victims. Let's head back outside now. They can look for victims and also search for their fellow firefighter when they, there's no visual way that you can find them in a, in a room like this. Now, I've got my hand on this firefighter's uh, shoulder, and now I can see where we're going. And typically what happens when you come out of a situation like that, especially on a day like today, it's hot, you feel a little bit claustrophobic inside of this suit, you're completely drenched from head to toe. And so, Chad, just turn around here. When we showed you this at five, and I'm not gonna have time to take off all my gear, but what happens is the firefighters rotate on 15 minute shifts. They come out here, they get off their coat, their air tank, their gloves, and immediately immerse their arms in these buckets of ice water. They also bring out one of these portable swamp coolers to every fire situation in these temperatures so that they can keep the firefighters safe in these extreme temperatures. Guys, we'll talk about to you. All right, Mark, thanks. Thanks for all the great demonstrations out there. People near Flagstaff. You know, I've always respected what the brave men and women who fight fires do, but it isn't until you actually put on this suit and you brave these temperatures and then feel the heat from the fire along with 75 pounds of equipment that you really get a sense of what they do. Dean Morales is just giving me a quick check over on my vital signs and you try to rotate these guys in and out. Uh, Dean, they're telling me we're out of time, but uh, real quickly, thank you so much. You betcha. Thanks for coming out. Guys, we'll toss it back to you. All right, and let's